Good afternoon, everyone. This is Talking Trade Live with On The Tools, uh, live across Facebook and YouTube. And as of this week, uh, it will also be out as a podcast after the broadcast. So if you go to your podcast provider, uh, you'll be able to download it from there. This week's topic, well, it's something we're all passionate about. It's how do we get more youngsters into construction? Uh, maybe I'm biased, but I firmly believe we are in the best industry for many reasons and we have the best people. And what better person to have uh, to discuss this with viewers uh, is Tim Redding, the CEO from Volunteer It Yourself, uh, a not-for-profit organisation which helps getting youngsters into construction. Tim, good afternoon. Uh, I'm sorry to pull you away from your homeschooling with your children, but thanks for joining us. Um, just a quick thing, volunteer it yourself, a uh, quick sort of synopsis and summary of what you guys do and how brilliant the work is you do. Yeah, well, we're, um, we're a social enterprise and at the heart of what we do, it's about challenging young people who are typically maybe unemployed or um, disengaged from training or education, trying to get young people to um, uh, uh, learn trade skills by volunteering to help fix up local community buildings. And it might be a rundown youth club, community centre, grassroots sports club, um, social housing, supported accommodation for young people. But the idea is it's combining um, getting young people skilled up, uh, opening their mind to the idea of learning a trade and entering the trade sector, construction sector, but at the same time as doing something for their community and helping improve, let's say, community venues and spaces that they might use and benefit from in their local community. Well, I tell you, keep comments coming in, people. Last week we had a record. I lost count of how many hundred it was. Um, but we're going to be talking about um, how to get more youngsters in. We're not going to focus on the problems. We know what they are, but more the solutions. And obviously, volunteer it yourself is certainly one of those. Straight into one comment, uh, Tim. Declan Heaton, uh, he's been looking to become an apprentice, bricklayer and apprentice. Sorry, he's just fallen off the bottom of my screen. Apologies. Uh, great to see so many comments coming in. Um, he's trying to get into uh, apprentice and brickland, but it's hard to find them at the moment due to the pandemic. Is there anything that he could possibly contact VIY about, or is this where he is sort of concentrating on the colleges when they reopen? Yeah, I think uh, um, it's a tough time. I think there are things that people can do. Um, uh, where our sites are up and running in the main, so uh, we work in community settings around the country. Uh, we've done about 600 projects to date. At any one time, we've probably got half a dozen projects live. Um, and uh, so it's a chance for young people to um, uh, gain entry level qualifications. We're a, a, a city and guilds training provider. So it means that young people, by doing a VOI project, can come away with some entry level three qualifications that can be a great door opener for um, unlocking that next step, which could be a traineeship or apprenticeship. And also on VOI, because you're working as a young person alongside. Um, local trades people who come from local employers, um, construction sector, SMEs, but also maybe linked with local training colleges. It's a chance for young people to connect with people who can say, look, if you've enjoyed your VOI project and you've shown appetite and you've come away with your city and gills, your next step could be an apprenticeship over here or speak to this person over there. So I think something like VOI is a great thing to be doing um, in the short term, which can open doors and point you forward to that next step. Well, what I want to do, and I, I knew that I'd have a big smile on my face, one of your projects that I uh, was well, going to come for a couple of hours on a Saturday and stay the whole weekend because um, I loved it so much, was Croydon Rugby Club um, giving their sort of external um, space a facelift, um, sorting out the car park, building benches, making sort of different zones for parking. And um, I was... I was blown away by a young lad um, called uh, Joseph, I believe, um, who, um, let's say, didn't have the greatest start in life, but all he wanted to do was learn. Now, if I was teaching him how to drill a pilot hole before putting a screw in to stop the wood split in, if I was making a simple cut on the chop saw, the, the passion from youngsters like that, when they sort of get and touchy-touchy actually get involved, it's just unbelievable, Tim. I mean, he, he, he was... If I was still taking youngsters on, he'd be with me yesterday. I know that, um, I mean, a lot, of the, a lot of the young people we work with uh, uh, are referred into VOI from things like Job Centre Plus, or they might even come from youth offending teams or the Prince's Trust, Cash 22, um, youth work organisations like that. And a lot of them maybe have struggled in conventional, like mainstream schools, colleges, and have struggled a bit perhaps with the, the, the academic side of things. 
But I think what we find is that once they get hands on uh, on a project that has real value, might be something to them in terms of their community. Um, you know, every time the levels of motivation and appetite and passion, it's it's kind of you know, even though you kind of semi expect it, it's incredible. And I think, um, and a lot of a lot a lot of that is down to the magic of having local tradespeople um, and construction workers front up, work alongside young people on these jobs, whether it be for a day or a week or longer, um, and and sh and share what they know and share their skills in a way that isn't some kind of teacher-student thing. But I think it's tradespeople who are really proud of what they do and, and they get that they want to help inspire that next kind of generation of tradespeople. And, and, and I think that's where the magic, that's, that's the rocket fuel behind VOI, is watching the interaction between a trade person who who's good at what they do but that they're kind of ready and able to share it with a young person who is trying to find their way in life and trying to open their mind to the whole idea of working in the trade um and um so yeah so i, I think universally people really respond to that um idea of doing something that feels real it matters it isn't in some classroom it isn't theoretical um and if you've got, I don't know, you know, that we work with people like Dulux and Travis Perkins, who will provide all our materials for free. And they'll say, look, we've got the materials for free. We've got, you know, windows to fix. You've got a toilet that won't flush, you know, a whole bunch of jobs that need doing. And and it isn't some mock training exercise. It's for real. And I think that gives it an element of compellingness or relevance that I think fires people up. Um uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think young people and it's a bit of an adage, but if you give them the tools, they will do the job. Uh, you know, really, it really does work that way. Well, from my side, being a tradesman, if you've not done it, anybody watching, if you've got some time on your hands and let's be fair, most of us have at the moment because of a certain situation. Um, get in touch with volunteer itself, because I tell you what, if you've never worked with these youngsters before and then someone comes in. And they're just looking at you, looking to, doesn't matter if you're doing carpentry or decorating, anything, you get a buzz as a trade with this youngster that is desperate to learn more. And also, the other positive side of that is you're getting someone into the industry, which could be the next, you know, big home builder or, or anything. So if you have got a spare bit of time, get in touch with Volunteer itself because you're giving back as well as encouraging the next generation. And I just want to go straight on to Glenn Wise's point. Um, I put it on a hold, so I haven't lost it. Uh, he says, my son's teacher told us that he shouldn't be concerned with the construction course and to leave it to the silly kids that don't want to learn true story. Sadly, that's what yeah. I got told as well, Tim. A little bit of the wrong um, perception at school. It's almost got to start from that, hasn't it? Yeah, and I think I, I, I think you're right. I think the hardest job is the very first job of switching kids on to think, this is something that's rewarding. It's relevant. It, it, it's, it's accessible. There are heaps of opportunities out there. And I think something like VOI is trying to take kids from zero to put it on their radar, to, 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 to raise awareness of the sector and then to point them forward. It's the first rung on the ladder. And I think people also don't understand that, yes, it might start with the young person learning a bit of carpentry or a bit of plastering or plumbing on a VOI project. But ultimately the sector that there are so many different job and career pathways across the trade building construction sector but you need to do something that grabs them that takes them from zero to something and then say right if you've enjoyed that just imagine where this might take you i mean it's uh um and and indeed i've seen i've seen it i've seen uh, uh, electricians or plumbers we work with who then speak to a group of young people on the first day on the job and they'll say look i'm a you know, I'm a plumber, I'm self-employed, I earn, you know, X amount a month, I drive a nice BMW, I went to a school over there, I used to go to this youth club, and here I am now, I'm my own boss, I pick and choose the jobs I do, um, and, and suddenly you, you, you can see that light bulb moment, and the children are putting their hand up and say, look, I want to be a plumber, I want to do that, and, and I think yeah. you have to find a way of, of, of drawing their attention, drawing them in, and then off the back of that, yeah, everything opens up for them, but it's certainly not about oh i don't know in any way um uh saying well look, the, the limit of your aspirations is about uh I don't know, working on tools it could lead you in all manner of of directions but it's it's trying to turn people's lives around to give them a sense of a, of direction which can open doors and open pathways well if you look at it i mean a lot of trades people you obviously start off learning any profession that's how you do it you learn off good people around you um 
you've got the opportunity. Let's let's look at the you know the, the nuts and bolts of the money side of things. Um, the figure in the in the papers at the moment is about fifty grand for university students when they come out uh, as a debt. Uh, and in that three or four year course, depending what you're studying, uh, you can get a qualification, come out. Um, electricians can start on 30, 35 grand a year with no debt. And within no time, if you're good and you want to progress, you can start taking on the odd person on your own. You've then got a business. Uh, you can then expand to whatever level you want. You then get a bit achy, the knees start going or the back sore. You can move into project management, health and safety, training, media. I don't think there's a better job. So I think it's, um, I really think the big thing is getting this message across at schools and then out of schools, such as VIY is doing. And I'm, apologies, Tim, I'm trying to read. A, thanks ever so much for all these comments. I'm going to start going through them with Tim now because um, the great thing is we're so passionate and this is really coming through. Um, Jane Mitchell, uh, my son wants to be a joiner, but his school no longer offers design and technology. That's sad. Yeah. Um, yeah. As there are no teachers, maybe some of you experienced trade should enter teaching. See, that's that's another thing which experience, you know, you've got a dicky back or dodgy knees. It's another great thing to do, Tim. Yeah, well, indeed, a lot of our mentors across the country are perhaps um, are saying, Andy, uh, probably aged 45 plus. Many of them are even semi-retired. We, we have have mentors in their 70s who are fully retired who are coming to help out as volunteer mentors. And uh, um, th there is something magical about watching an 18 year old with a, a 70 year Eight year old on the job together. Um, but I think, I mean, when we started out, we said, no, that we're going to work outside of school. I think there was more flexibility, more, more openness uh, from the non-formal education sector to try and do projects like this based on real build projects in the community that offer an experience for young people that they don't get at school. Uh, and schools were a bit twitchy about it as well. I think schools felt it as feels a bit out there, feels a bit risky perhaps. But here we are sort of six, seven years down the track and we have uh, about 600 schools that, we, that we've worked with over the last few years who have come to us and said, look, we want you to come into our school to uh, talk about uh, the sector, about VOI with students, and then to run workshops. And indeed, we invite students into local community projects. But many schools have said, actually, that's great, but we'd love to do a project where the children want to repurpose an empty classroom or create uh, a wellness space or an outdoor classroom or improve the sports hall or build a bike shed for the school. And, and so what's great is that schools have kind of belatedly seen that, that this is an opportunity to get um, students learning and applying skills in a, in a meaningful, interesting, exciting way. Um, and, and, and sadly, you know, most many schools are not able to provide this kind of provision themselves. And that's why they, 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 I think they're very open to having an organisation like ourselves come in and try and enable this. And also to bring employers in from our partner organisations who can talk about their roles and their employers and those next steps again beyond VOI. Um, so I, um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think there is something lacking around this area in mainstream education, but I think, um, I think employers and tradespeople have a great role to play in, as I say, sprinkling a bit of magic over the way that schools approach this. Well, one thing, um, about three years ago, the school that my lab was at, um, they had all these little old tricycles and um, toys outside. Day like today, where it's absolutely thumping it down with rain, these things are getting ruined. And so I spoke to the head and I said, look, you need some sort of out outdoor shelter. Mm -hmm. So I said, we haven't got the budget. Typical with all schools. Um, so Juicen's kindly donated the timber. And um, I had a, a chippy mate of mine join me. And we spent a day building this, I don't know what it was, massive, about 18 foot by four foot, just simple, you know, stud. Out, sort of outbuilding, we felt it, it was all waterproof so the kids, but the big thing was every single boy and girl out at lunch break, playtime, they were fascinated with what we were doing. And you could see, I mean, kids have got this in them. We said this before we came on air, when they're little and go to school, the first year or two, they make stuff with Lego and cardboard boxes and bog roll and all this. But then that seems to stop. Yet when these kids saw us doing this, it was and I think it's, kids have got it in them, but if we can perhaps go back and, you know, maybe re-educate. That's a long process, though, Tim, so I'm conscious that's probably another conversation. A um, lot of comments coming in. Naomi Barlow's one that's jumped out about kids and what their priorities are these days. When I mean kids, I mean early teens to early 20s. Uh, Naomi Barlow makes a point which a few of you have raised. 
Kids are far too interested in TikTok and YouTube videos making them so they can make money. My partner's a builder, so he's very proud of everything him and his team do at KLR. Well, excellent news that your hubby's a builder and fair play to him. Hopefully he's not been rained off today like a lot of us. But Tim, is, 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 that, the, is that what we're up against, this new way of what kids perceive as easy money sitting in their lounge doing a TikTok video? I think, uh, I mean, I think that the challenge is putting those opportunities in front of young people. I still think young people are able, absolutely able to um, um, kind of take an opportunity and run with it. But I think it's about making it more accessible, um, um, you know, raising awareness. And I think in our case, that, that, that as I say, most of the young people who get referred into us may come, may have histories of exclusion or disengagement or struggling with learning and education and training. And yet we find, that, that, that once you give them the right environment in which to kind of change that and to apply themselves, and it feels quite old school, it's very hands-on, it's, um, uh, um, yeah, it's very practical, it's very real, um, and I think, uh, you know, it, it, it's very different to all the other stuff that they might be bombarded with or exposed to, as whether it be their free time or school time, it's very different, and I think people inherently respond to it you say i think it's something there's something about the human condition there's something about making something also making something with a purpose and and, and what i've seen is so many young people who um uh help out improving their local youth global community center and not only do they come away with maybe um a city skills that they can you know talk about and um put on their cv and opens their mind to a next step but also suddenly that they've gone from being somebody feels kind of disconnected or disengaged in their community suddenly that's their community center that's their youth club they are suddenly that they've got ownership of it that they've helped improve it they've helped repair it they've helped refurbish it and suddenly they're going to look after it and i think there's something going on there around you know yes it's about skills but it's a way it, it, it's happening within the context of getting getting young people engaged and to take a stake and to um uh you know become an active participant in their community i think all this goes hand in hand about how you how you engage how you um excite and make this stuff relevant and compelling but i do think if it's done in the right way um you know young people can see that they have, that they can understand there's something i've got to give as a volunteer i've got to give my time i've got to apply myself to this but there's lots of that that they get out of it and i think it's that give and get and i think that value exchange in a way i think i think i think they get it you know and i think it's the same for you know that the mentors the trade people say look i give my time and i mentor but but it's also in a way the feedback we get from the mentors is about how they feel it's helping them develop and maybe learn new skills around tutoring and mentoring which they've never known they've had um uh so um i think i think i think it comes down to you know making these opportunities it, it accessible and if it's done in the right way young people will grab it and run with it well there's one point which keeps popping up in the comments please send comments in um like last week there's been many many so apologies if i can't read them all out but one point which we won't discuss but i want to bring it up um naomi barlow it's a point which she's made which is not just honest but it's the reality of what we're up against working at aldi for 13 quid or graft now laborers I've done it. Um, I laboured in Australia and I lived in Sydney. And Jesus, if the youngsters over here think they got it tough. Um, it's it's hard work. And we know that, you know, it's an appallingly low apprenticeship wage um, when you're going to get a few pounds an hour more working at Audi. So that's something which I think we need to look at as an industry. We need to get this apprenticeship wage up because unless you're living at home with your mum and dad, you can't afford to live. It's as simple as that. Just going through the comments, if you've just joined us, it's Talking Trade live across Facebook and YouTube. Um, and also it will be available to download as a podcast. Um, so go to your provider after the show is finished. Uh, we are talking about how to get youngsters into the best industry in the world. And we've already been through why it's so good. Um, you know, what opportunities you've got of working for yourself, the flexibility, you can earn good money and then go into something else later in life if it's training teaching health and safety or as we found last week there's covid officers out there on building sites i still haven't found one by the way but i am looking uh, joining me is tim from volunteer it yourself and we're going through uh, all the comments and i'm going to quickly head over to them now because we've got about 
10 or 15 minutes left to try and read out as many as possible. Um, so we'll do this a bit like um, a bit like uh, Mastermind. I'll just fire a quick question to him, quick answer, just so we can get everyone trying to get them in. Um, Craig Gamble, modern teachers tend to push students away from trade jobs um, into ITC media. My son was told that he was too clever for just a building trade. Yeah, and I think this goes back to the point, Andy, about the fact that um, um, uh, the, the, the building construction sector you know, is so varied in the um, variety of jobs and career pathways it offers. And people, I think, don't, don't appreciate that. But I think that um, often the hardest bit of the job is to get young people excited about what, that, what their immediate next step could be. And, and, and I think trade skills um, is, a, is a brilliant doorway for people into the sector. You know, and that might be the thing that really grabs them and, and, and that they want to stick with, but it could be a stepping stone onto other opportunities and pathways across the sector. But I do think that there's something wonderfully engaging and um, uh, compelling about learning, learning trade skills, learning practical skills in the community setting that's good for you and good for your community. Uh, Lee Kyle is, yeah, Lee Kyle loves his job. He's a self-employed um, joiner. Uh, as you've heard on previous shows, I regard joiners as one of the, if not the most skillful trade. Let's wait for the comments to come in from all your other trades having a tear up. Uh, Lee Kyle, he was an apprentice joiner 16 years ago. And the inverted commas light bulb moment was when he saw the pay packet over a thousand a week clear into his bank account. Best thing he's ever done, self-employed, and now he loves it. Again, a big pull there, uh, Tim, that, you know, you've got flexibility you can earn good money we all know sparks and plumbers um earn ridiculous amounts of money um we won't go into that now that will be another show because we've had some good ones last year um sally gardner it, sorry tim it, it, sorry andy it is people like kyle who um put the hand up get stuck in are willing to share that passion and their experiences with young people that really make the difference you know and there's i mean i like to think we've got a lot of people like kyle who help on VOY and and the feedback we get from the young people is that 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 the impact of having real trace people mentor them on the job is 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 the thing that unlocks that light bulb moment you know and um uh you know because just you know just from the comments that you get a sense of people's pride in what they do uh, yeah. um uh it's you know it's a hell of an asset and at the moment it's a bit of a wasted asset um you know if we're not and and I, and I should say that we're open totally to anyone across the country saying look i've got a skill and i'm keen to share it you know that that the more trade mentors we can find and unlock and mobilize uh, all the better the more projects we can do the more young people we can benefit well one thing i will say if you are thinking of um, getting in touch with volunteer it yourself um in, for whatever reason you're 50 50 uh, take it from me do it you get such a buzz with these youngsters wanting to learn off you and you're giving back uh, even if you only do it for a day or two but I tell you one thing, if you do do it, you're going to be hooked, because I certainly am. Uh, Sally Gardner's made a good point. Um, and this this is slightly one of the negative sides of what's happening at the moment. Um, pretty similar to how I was a few years ago. She looked at taking on apprenticeships. So currently, uh, they've got a carpentry business fitting furniture. But there's no courses close to you. Uh, when she phoned up, she was told the 16-year-old had to travel 110 miles twice a week. Uh, we'd love to take on apprentices, but it's difficult or so difficult to organise. Maybe we should be allowed to do it and get them on a CITB course like fitted interiors and encourage them that way. That's one big problem. Thank you, Sally. Um, great photo. I don't know. <laughs> is that your other half in the background? Um, yeah, with his tongue out. Fair play. Uh, I think that's a big problem. It's tough for small or micro businesses to get apprenticeships in. CITB are obviously... Uh, construction industry training board and um, we are looking at getting them on soon because I know that will be a lively one people have got their thoughts on the good the bad and the ugly with them but um, let's focus on some other comments um, Tino Blake he uh, is a carpentry apprentice and because of Covid uh, I haven't been taught properly both from college and the bloke I work with so he's quitting well, the advice I would give, Tino, is hang in there, mate, because when, listen, what we're going through at the moment is a bit of a one-off. Um, everyone's up against it. But listen, if you come out the other side with that qualification, having stuck at it, believe me, you'll, you'll be absolutely over the moon you did. So, 
you know, please hang in there. Um, get on the get on the blower and, and speak to companies, even if you just go and help out for a bit and learn. To me, that's the best way. Learn off people on the tools, experience chippies and joiners because it's superb. Um, Dan Pierce has made a point which a lot of other people have. Uh, science aren't, sorry, sites aren't exactly that appealing nowadays. Uh, no radios, yeah, tell me about it, uh, are on a lot of sites, which makes it unbearable because you've got to listen to us trade sing, which is generally crap. It's such a shame. For years, people have relied on music or a voice in their ear to get them through the working day. I think that's another point. Is that health and safety gone mad? Um, if you remember last week's show, we were talking about brick um, bricklayers not being able to wear shorts because of that horrendous string line, which might brush against their leg as they work. But yeah, this residential is great. We use radio every day. Um, customers got to get used to it because our singing is appalling. Uh, going through more comments, how can we get more youngsters into construction? Um, Sean Graham's back again, and I do like this. Good God, it's true. Unless there's an app for it, they're not going to be interested. Technologies ruin young people's drives as they prefer to sit on their phones. Uh, personally, everyone knows my thoughts. Hardest trade to find? Labourers, because they do just want to sit on their phone, smoke a fag or rolly, and have a row with the missus. Um, keep these comments coming in. This is brilliant. What it shows is how passionate we are. Um, Jacob Fuller. Tim, what are your thoughts on this is colleges need to be incentivized to have part time students and apprentices. There's more money for a college in having a full time student. So you see these courses heavily advertised. Yet how many people at the end of full time course will end up in the industry? Yeah, well, I and and I think there is something in that because I think that uh, we, 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 we link up with a lot of colleges. But the colleges typically will come to us and say, you know how do they reach out to young people who are going to benefit from a course but 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 you're right that they're looking to draw them into existing courses which are college based and i think increasingly that they struggle to identify um uh kind of community based work experience for students so so it's the in college bit that they can provide but they really struggle to add on a bit of meaningful work experience alongside that so the colleges will essentially approach us and say can they refer their students or would be students into our projects and I think it tells me that, again, that there's something about, for a lot of kids, um, the, the thought of spending time in college trying to learn stuff, stuff in a workshop-based environment, it isn't quite the same. It isn't as compelling and as, as sticky and sustainable as people, I think, learning those skills in a real setting. Um, and, um, and, and indeed, as a sitting guilds training centre, uh, we can assess and accredit young people without them having to spend any time in college. Um, so, and I think, and I know that for certain young people who take part, that's that's an attraction because they're actually turned off, I think, by college pathways at times. Um, but at the same time, I also accept that what we do is a way of, it's like a um, uh, an appetizer and off the back of BRY projects, hey, I'm, I'm all up for saying to young people, a next step may be to consider doing a higher, further level training course via a college. But, but I think colleges I think can struggle to do the engagement bit trying to take people from zero to saying a full-time course is for me because I think they kind of want to try it that they want to understand this is for me is this something I feel good at is this something that I enjoy um and I think as I say colleges it can be a big step to go from um committing to a full-time course at college well, we are covering a lot of topics. I, I sadly, looking at the time, I've got about five minutes left, Tim. So what I want to do is go back to comments. I think the great thing is, one thing this show today has proved, we've got a hell of a lot of passionate people. Now, I know the weather's a bit rubbish, but it certainly is here um, down south. But, you know, what we're seeing is people just looking at the number of comments is people are passionate about what we do. And I do hope a lot of people will get in touch with VIY and offer a bit of time for mentoring and, you know, getting these next generation of kids in. Um, just going through the comments here, a lot of things are too many to read out, um, going back to the old YTS scheme. Now, I think we should have that as a topic another week and maybe, Tim, um, you can come back on because the ones that remember it, it was a brilliant system. Um, maybe the current apprenticeship scheme isn't up to scratch, but I think that's another subject um, in terms of a bit more in depth. So we'll do that another week. Um, I think... Uh, Carl Ritson, plenty of companies out there will give them the chance. College would support them as well, as long as they're able to comply with the health and safety side of things. Uh, this links back to another comment, which is sorry, it's gone. Um, 
was a lot of people have said, Tim, um, the jokes and the laughs and the fun we used to have on site, we've got to stop because it's turning kids away. Are kids these days soft, little snowflakes, which I think they are, or do the firms, the big sites need to sort of pipe down a bit with some of the gangs and the, the fun that they have with apprentices? Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I think for us, and that actually works is what we're not trying to do is any in any way replicate a kind of a, a, a school formal classroom environment. And I think part of the appeal is that young people who have struggled with that kind of mainstream training and education find the atmosphere that's kind of created by the mentors who approach it in a very purposeful way, but also that 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 they're there to create an atmosphere to set the tone. And I think young people respond to that. I think they, as I say, it, it, it doesn't feel like a student teacher thing. It feels like uh, people, both young and old or older, working together with a sense of common purpose. And I think if they do that and enjoy it at the same time and have fun doing it, it makes it even more impactful. So, I mean, you know, we, I mean, we allow the trade mentors to set the tone and, and, and for us, it works incredibly well um because you can do that but you don't you don't you, may, you can have fun and enjoy it but without losing a sense of drive and purpose around the work you're doing and uh as i say for the young people we're trying to reach and benefit i think that 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 strikes the right tone carol um i hope i pronounce your surname right um Zavizlak. uh vele relevant question are trades like plastering and carpentry worth getting into despite the current recession any trade is worth getting into because you've got a skill for life and you're always going to be needed. Just like any profession, though, any industry, if you work hard and you become good at it, you're always going to be in demand. Um, all the residential work that we do, you always need both trades that you've mentioned, they're plasters and carpenters. So I don't think any trade is, is um, in less demand. You know, there's obviously reports of certain trades being short of people with bricklayers retiring, but Listen, if you get into the trade, focus on one and become good at it, you're always, always going to be in demand. Uh, sadly, Tim, I think we're running out of time. Can I just thank everyone for the comments? I'm trying to scroll through them. I couldn't read them all out. Um, this this show, we could probably go on all afternoon, but um, on the tools, we'll probably go mad. So uh, it has been a really good show. Tim, thanks ever so much um, for all your time. Just finally, um, quick message to anyone watching this thinking, Do you know, I'd like to get involved. What's the best thing to do? to contact VIY. Yeah, well, and Andy, thanks for the chance to talk today. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, if you're a tradesperson, building construction worker, and you're interested in the idea of helping to volunteer on a project local to you, then please do, um, if you go to our website or find us online, you'll find our phone number or indeed the contact details on the website um, uh, and get in touch and we can um, uh, let you know what opportunities are local to you. And the same for young people. If young people are tuning in here and and they want to know, is there a project happening local to me that I can get involved with? The same applies. Uh, if you find us online, uh, um, volunteeryourself.org, um, then, uh, you, you know, you can make contact. And also, if people have potential projects, hey, if you're, whether you're involved in the trade or not, or a young person who might be interested in volunteering on VOR or not, but if you know of a, uh, a community space or place that's in need of uplift, repair, refurbishment, helping, um, then we'd like to hear from you too, because we need people, we need projects. Um, um, and uh, But Andy, yeah, thanks for the chance to talk about VOI, and uh, I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. No problem. Just to finish with, uh, trades people are brilliant and love helping others. Keep an eye on the tools pages over the next, um, probably into next week. Uh, there's a trade up in Scotland called Ian Miller. Um, I don't know if people, um, it's quite a small um, industry, construction we seem to know what's going on but on face um, facebook and other social media instagram uh, poor ian had a fire which gutted his house um, he lost everything on 30th of december and on the tools are going to be doing a little video because um as trades people if you can donate any money even if it's just a tenner um if you can donate some tiles or a window or something because um i've spoken to him and he's just one of the sound down to earth great tradespeople, which has sadly lost everything with a fire. So that video will be coming out and on the tools. Um, I'll tell you what, let's get up there into Scotland and um, get a few of us on the job and see what we can do to help. But Tim, thanks ever so much. Um, I'm rabbiting on far too much. It's pouring down with rain and um, I've now got to go and uh, get the kids from their school. So it's been wonderful talking to you, Tim. And um, I look forward to seeing everyone again, same time next week. <laughs>